you all with your spirit. We come to this great feast of Pentecost, the conclusion of our whole Easter season of joy, this feast which we call the birthday of the church. Our Lord ascended into heaven, and now the Father and He sends upon us once again His Holy Spirit to dwell within us. We acknowledge our sins, our need for His presence in our life. Lord, you have ascended to the right hand of the Father in heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have sent the Holy Spirit as the soul of our church. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. The Spirit brings us all his gifts, his strength and courage and power. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Give us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
I, Ezekiel, prophesied as I had been told, and even as I was prophesying, I heard a noise. It was a rattling as the bones came together, bone joining bone. I saw the sinews and the flesh come upon them, and the skin covered them, but there was no spirit in them. Then the Lord said to me, Prophesy to the spirit, prophesy, son of man, and say to the spirit, Thus says the Lord God, From the four winds come, O spirit, and breathe into these slain, that they may come to life. I prophesied as he told me, and the spirit came into them. They came alive and stood upright, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They have been saying, Our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, and we are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus is the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves, and have you rise from them, and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves, and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. Word of the Lord. Yeah. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood up and exclaimed, Let anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. As scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from within him who believes in me. He said this in reference to the Spirit, that those who came to believe in him were to receive. There was, of course, no Spirit yet, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I can't recall as a little child how much I enjoyed hearing people singing the old Negro spiritual and dry bones. Yes, Ezekiel had that vision, a plain covered with bones, stripped of any flesh, dead, dry bones. And the Lord spoke to him that word of hope that I will pour forth my spirit upon them, put flesh upon them, breathe my spirit into them, they will come together, they will live again. And indeed, that is what Jesus Christ has accomplished in our world. And we hear St. Paul in today's reading, the letter to the Romans, speaking to us, of what's going on in our world. Speaking to Christians who perhaps were a bit discouraged, they thought if we believe in Christ, everything will be wonderful. And here they were, suffering for Christ, being persecuted, put to death for him. And Paul speaks of it as a process of childbirth. Painful, yes, but a new world was being created new world in which God's Spirit dwells in all of us, animates all of us, empowers us with his gifts. Indeed, he speaks of hope. With hope we were saved. Pope Benedict XVI some years ago in his very first encyclical entitled, In Hope We Are Saved. Yes, hope looks beyond the troubles of the present time to know that God, who is at work in our lives and in our world, has already, in Jesus' death and resurrection, conquered all evil, even death itself. Yes, our God has accomplished his work of redemption, but it takes a while in our own lives, in the life of our whole world, for that redemption to be fully accomplished. God has poured forth his spirit into our hearts in Pentecost. We well remember the story of those 12 apostles. After the ascension of the Lord, staying in Jerusalem, as he said, and waiting for the coming of the spirit, they were paralyzed by fear, so afraid that perhaps they would be found out and also made to suffer and die for Christ. They were huddled in that little room that they had the last supper with Jesus. And suddenly on that morning, about nine o'clock, the Spirit of the Lord came upon them and burst through the shutters settling upon them in tongues of flame. There they were gathered with Mary and receiving the Spirit. And how changed they were. These men who had been paralyzed by fear now couldn't stay in that room any longer. They had to go out into the streets, ecstatically praising the God who had done such wondrous things in Jesus. And they knew they were given the commission by Jesus. These ordinary fishermen, ordinary workers, told to tell the whole world the good news of what Jesus did and what he said. They were not filled with fear anymore. 
They went forth to proclaim the gospel of Christ, the good news. And so we call that day the birthday of the church as some 3,000 people accepted their message and came to baptism into Jesus Christ. The church was born. Yes, the Holy Spirit is the soul of the church. Without the Spirit, we're dead, we're disunited. But it is the Spirit who brings us together and empowers us. He gives us all his gifts. And how often when Jesus spoke to those apostles about the coming of the Spirit, he said he will give you power, strength, courage. Perhaps some of you saw Pope Francis on March 27, holding a very unusual prayer service in St. Peter's in Rome, praying that God would deliver all of us from this virus. He was speaking to an empty St. Peter's Square, rain swept, depressing, and his message was one of hope. He commented over and over again on the gospel story from Mark of the apostles in the boat and suddenly a great storm came up and they were terrified. And there was Jesus asleep in the boat. And when they woke him, he said, why are you afraid? Have you no faith? And not once but five times in his sermon did Pope Francis repeat those words of Jesus. Yes, no matter what great the storm is that we face in our life, no matter how we may be tempted to be paralyzed by the disease of fear, Jesus says, I am with you. I will deliver you. My spirit is within you. And my spirit gives you power strength, courage. You know no matter what you have to suffer now, you look forward in hope to that day when he completes his work in each of us, in all of creation, and the new world of the saints comes forth. Jesus said, let anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. Do you thirst for happiness, for peace, for real joy? Then come to Jesus. Come and open your mind and your heart and welcome the Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, soul of the church, soul of each one of us. Come, dwell within us again. Renew us. Renew the face of the earth. Give us that strength and that courage to move on toward our goal of eternal joy and peace. Come, Holy Spirit, come. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life of the lasting Amen. The Holy Spirit unites us as the body of Christ and joins us to Jesus, our priest and Savior, as he leads us to the Father with confidence. We present our petition. Our response today is, Lord, send us your spirit. Pentecost is the birthday of the church.
for all Christians that we will be renewed in our faith and love and that all will be united in one church of Christ. We pray. Lord, send, send us to your spirit. Pentecost is a feast of forgiveness and peace. That there be an end to violence, crime, and injustice in our nation. And that all may live in mutual respect and peace. We pray. Lord, send us the Spirit. Pentecost is a celebration of hope and joy. That the Spirit may bless the youth of our parish, especially those who are graduating from elementary school, high school, or college and all those whose education has been disrupted by the coronavirus, we pray. Lord, send us your spirit. Pentecost is a festival of praise that all the members of our parish may recognize all the gifts they have received from the Spirit and use them well to build the kingdom of Christ, we pray. Lord, send us your spirit. Pentecost is a celebration of healing and love for the victims of recent natural disasters and storms, for those affected by the virus and the restrictions on ordinary life, and the sick of our parish, especially Frank Sullivan, Catherine Thomas, Catalina Weddle, Edward Mebs, and Gay Marigi, that they find healing, strength, and hope in their time of need. We pray. Lord, send us to your spirit. Pentecost is a feast of life and glory. That those who have lived lives of faith and piety and in the fear of the Lord, especially the deceased of our parish and for Gertrude Cloud, that they may share the eternal life and glory of Christ, we pray. Lord, Lord send us your spirit. We pause to remember our personal needs. confident trust, we pray. Lord, send us your spirit. Eternal God and Father, send forth the spirit of your Son into our hearts, and renew us as the people of your covenant. May we use well the gifts of the Spirit to empower us to build the kingdom of your Son, who is Lord forever and ever.
sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Pour out upon these gifts the blessing of your spirit, we pray, O Lord, so that through them your church may be imbued with such love that the truth of your saving mystery may shine forth for the whole world through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your pastoral mystery to completion. You bestow the Holy Spirit today on those who make your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace. To God unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Francis our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, all the members of our parish family, all those who are ill and suffering because of the virus. And Lord, we pray for our nation that there may be an end to violence and bloodshed, crime and injustice. And we pray for all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise. Or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying the homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of Pentecost, on which the Holy Spirit appeared to the apostles in tongues of fire, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious of a Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, blessed Joseph, her spouse, her blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cordelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, cousins, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously at this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those 
you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said, the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Christ our Lord, 
to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, O mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, glory, glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Given us permission to open up our church. 
churches again beginning on June 1st, Monday. And so we will be having our daily Masses. And after the 9 o'clock Mass, we will continue to have the church open for private prayer and devotion until 11 o'clock. On Sunday, of course, the first Sunday of June, we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Trinity with the usual schedule of Masses. Be sure to tune in on Friday for our reflection as we will be showing you what to expect when you come to church in our efforts to assure in as great a way as we can the safety and good health of everyone participating in our Masses. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, the Father of lights, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Spirit, the Paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing, and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with his purifying light. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith, and by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks.